Okay, going to take a look at Photoshop CS6 and 3D capabilities. We're going to be modeling a 3D version of the Minecraft grass block icon. So, to begin, let's open a new document. Um, I'm going to choose a square dimension and let's use 512. You can really do whatever you want. It depends on what size you want your block to be and what you're going to be working with. Let's just do this for now. Um, 512. Right, so we need to essentially create a texture for each of our sides of the cube and the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and create the classic grassy side. I've chosen um, ahead of time some colors for the brown. You can copy these down if you like. You can really use any color as long as it looks sort of like dirt. So this is my darker brown and my lighter brown A47, B47. Um, let's go ahead and switch to the gradient tool and drag down. Make sure, oops, sorry, make sure your uh, foreground color is the darker one. Um, let's do this again. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have a really nice blend, not too dark at the top. This will become clear in a second. Um, we're going to go to Filter Gallery and to Stained Glass. These are the settings I've used. You can change the light intensity. It's only going to kind of create a more intense light in the middle. Um, you want to make sure, though, whatever you're doing is that there are definitions in the shapes around all the edges. Down at the bottom, it won't be a problem. Um, but at the top, you want to make sure that you can see each individual bit of stained glass up there. If it's too dark and it melds together, uh, your pixels will be blended together. There are too many dark pixels up there. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this. Now we're going to pixelate with a mosaic. And you can really um, choose whichever size you like. Uh, this is more or less making sure that we have um, a good rounded off number and that our squares fit inside. You can see that my right side is slightly small. It's not a perfect square. The bottom is also the same way. So we can increase this and you'll notice that the border increases on those two sides. Um, 41, it looks too much. 39 maybe. 37. 37 looks pretty good. Let's go with that. Alright, so now we have a piece of dirt. Um, we're going to create the grass up top. So let's zoom in. I usually like to stick with making this uh, into quarters. So you see we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 15. It's roughly the same size. And we'll, we'll drop down a couple blocks and you'll see what I'm talking about soon. Um, so let's go ahead and select these first three here. Drag across and make this nice and even. Okay, so we're going to make a mask for this part of the layer and we will do a hue and saturation mask. Now you can kind of adjust this to whichever color you'd like, obviously, but to match the Minecrafty green color, it's slightly yellow, kind of like this. We'll turn up our saturation just to get a better distribution between the light and the dark pixels. Um, 45, that looks pretty good. Let's go with this. Um, so in order to get a kind of realistic looking piece of grass, what we're going to do is grab our brush tool and make sure you're on the pencil. And I've gone ahead and switched over to square brushes, like here. Um, and just make sure it's the same size as your blocks that you chose earlier. So I chose 37. Make sure this is 37 also. Um, and at this point, you'll notice that we're editing a mask, so our background and foreground colors are white and black. Um, if you want to add or subtract from the mask, um, you'll notice that we can just do this to plop in a little green square or we can plop out the green ones and put in some brown. Um, I'm going to just do this in a couple random spots to make it look more like the classic green 
grass blocks. Um, let's just do one of these here. And just know that this is kind of totally manual. It doesn't snap or anything like that. So you have to kind of clean up these little edges. Um, and you don't, of course, have to do that, but I'm kind of anal about that. Uh, let's switch over green. Put a couple more of these down. It's nice to get a distribution of different color also. So if you can find, so like the darker ones will be a darker green, and the lighter blocks like this will be a very nice light green. Um, so let's go ahead and, yeah, you'll notice that this, I didn't really quite get it, so it's probably one or two pixels over. Um, these here, here. Let's zoom out and take a look at that. It's not bad. Um, I'll clean up this edge a little bit here. And this one. Great. And this too. That's a little much. Okay. Um, so, this is what we're going to use. Now, I'm on Windows, um, so go ahead and control click the hue saturate saturation layer um, and I'm going to create a mask for that with levels and I'm just going to take our our high and midpoints up and down a little bit just to get a better distribution of contrast here let's try this cool this just brings kind of a nice bright feeling to it um, there's one of our panels great so I'm going to create a group now. Let's rename this to side. And I'm going to stick all of these into the side group. And at this time, I would suggest duplicating this group and just name it other sides. Right. OK. Um, we still need to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to copy layer one out of here because this is already a perfectly good, perfectly good looking um, brown piece of dirt. So let's go ahead and copy this, make a new layer. Um, we'll go back up to our layer here, paste. And um, I'm going to just call this bottom, drag it down here. Um, let's also copy this again, make a new layer. This is going to be our top, like the green grass top. Um, and all I'm going to do simply for this is uh, apply another hue saturation with the same that we used here. So 62 and 45 to these colors. Let's just do that real quick. 62, 45, we got a nice bright green, looks very pretty. Uh, let's create a new group, call it top, and stick these two in the top folder. All right, great. So I've got my top, my sides, oops. Let's drag this up to the actual top, there we go. Um, top, bottom, and other sides. So what we need to do now is dig into 3D. So we're going to create a 3D shape. Um, before you do any of this 3D work, make sure you convert these all into smart objects. Let's go ahead and... Oops. I'm not quite sure why this happens, um, but if you are not looking at the layer and you create a smart object, it just kind of turns it blank for some reason. Um, but if you are looking at it and have it selected and then create the, the smart object, it works. Could be a bug, I'm not really 100% sure. Okay, great. So we have all of our smart objects. Um, what I'm going to do now is take the first side, let's take a look at this, make it a little bigger. Um, 
we're going to switch over to 3D mode. And what I'm going to do with this side selected, I'm going to go to the 3D tab. And I'd like a mesh from the preset. And I'm going to choose Cube and then hit Create. So you'll notice that we go right into 3D mode. Um, these panels are all really useful. I'd suggest keeping them open, um, just for beginners anyway. So we can take a look. I have my Move tool selected right now. And if you have the Move tool selected, you'll notice um, the cursor has this little rotating guy. Um, this essentially means rotate the 3D object, roll, drag, slide, and scale. Um, this is in context with whatever is selected down here in 3D mode. So this is my current view. This is essentially just the camera looking at this object. Um, if I select the actual cube, you'll notice that rotating the cube around doesn't rotate the workspace, but the cube itself. So make sure that whatever you're doing, um, you have the correct thing selected here. So here's my cube, here's the camera, and this is the light. Uh, we'll get to the light in a minute. So you'll notice that when I was rotating the cube around that all the sides are blank except the one that we extruded uh, using our smart object. So what I'd like to do um, is apply a texture obviously to the other sides of this cube. So if this is our front, this must be our right, this is our top, um, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So you'll notice that in the 3D tab, um, you have all the different materials and each panel. You can individually select and move them and alter them. Um, but in order to get a texture on here, we need to actually go back to the Layers tab. And you'll notice that in our Layers tab, when we have this side extruded selected, that we have bottom material, top material, left, right, back, front, everything's there. Um, if I open up the front material, it should, in theory, be this grass panel. And you'll notice I'm mousing over it right now, and it's kind of popping up like that. And it shows the dimensions. Um, let's just double click on it, and there we go. So um, I'm going to switch over to my selection tool. I'm going to try to copy this. Select like the whole thing and then copy. Um, let's close this. Let's go to our right material. You see it's blank. Open this up paste, close it, save it. There we go, bam. So we've just applied that texture to that side. So let's go over here to the back and the left sides, do the same, paste, save, close, and which one was that? That was our back, so here's the left. Paste, save, close, there we go. So we now have our cube textured on all the sides. Let's do the bottom. Um, so for this one, we're going to turn this off real quick, go over to the bottom, turn this on, select all, copy, go back to our side, bottom material, double click it, paste, save, close. There we go. So we now have a bottom on our sides. Let's take a look at the top. Same thing over here. Copy it. Unselect it, deselect it. Uh, go back to our side. Top material, double click, paste, save, close. And I'll switch back to my move tool to go back into 3D mode. Um, there you have it. This is our cube. Um, we've just created a Minecraft 3D grass block. Let's go ahead and render this guy. Um, I'd like to go back to 3D tab, the current view. Um, let's check out the default view. It was just here where we had it. Um, OK. So you'll notice that um, the plane is moving because we have the current view selected, um, the scene, as it were. Um, we do have a light source. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see the front side, and you can tell that the back sides are dark and the bottom is dark. So let's try a fancy little render here with some light. Um, 
I do like the infinite light, but for this example, I'm going to use the spotlight. I think it's a little more versatile. Um, let's change that over. And you can use each, each of these different controls. You can move the light, you can rotate it, um, and the little arms that come down allow you to scale it. So you can make the cone of light bigger or the actual hot spot in the middle bigger or smaller. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move the light. We'll drag it back towards us. We'll stick it down here. If you're in rotate mode like this, um, you can, if as long as you have the light selected, you can click anywhere, left click anywhere, and you can see that you can just kind of like drag the light around and pull a spotlight anywhere. Um, let's pull this over here a little bit. Um, There we go. Uh, let's, okay, so over here on the Properties tab for the Spotlight, you'll notice that um, we can turn up the intensity of the light, like so. We can change the color of the light, we can make it more reddish in hue. Um, any color, honestly. Um, I kind of tend to like the red or the orange colors, a very, very soft just to bring out a little more contrast in, in the brown and the green. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at what this is going to look like in our render. Um, there are a couple other things we can do to this. Um, we can turn the shadow off. You'll notice that if I move this around, um, we kind of have this pre preset shadow back here. Um, and it goes with the direction of the light, of course. Um, we can turn that shadow off turn it on, turn up the softness of the shadow so it's more blended into the background. That will increase the render time. Many of the different features that you can put on will increase the render time dramatically. Um, let's just turn the shadow off and um, we can also go to our current view, the camera, and we can adjust other things like um, we can adjust the depth of field giving it kind of a blurred look. If you're interested in that, change the distance so that maybe like the front, the very front edge of the cube is in focus and the back of it is out of focus. Um, let's change the depth of field a little bit. We'll just give it this fancy kind of uh, depth of field focus on the, on the front corner that's closest to us. Um, okay, so I'm going to render this and then we'll be right back. So let's give it a all right, um, so our render is complete. Notice that um, the depth of field worked. Uh, we can save this. Go ahead and save this as a file and take a look at it. Um, there's our little block. Not bad. Of course, you don't have to uh, to use the depth of field at all, um, and you can have just a nice cube. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, if you'd like to use other blocks, um, I actually downloaded a I downloaded a 512 HD texture pack for Minecraft. This essentially gives us the sides to any cube that we want to make um, a 3D model out of. You can take a look at the crafting station, for example. As we zoom in, you see like how detailed these really are. Um, so if I wanted to do this, for example, I could go up here to these top pixels, grab this. Okay, so here's our crafting station. We can, we can just copy this selection, um, go back into our 3D model. Um, if I wanted to, we can actually just start a new new thing altogether. Um, it's like I'm a little bit off here, but you can see that if I go to 3D, uh, extract mesh from cube, create, um, I've got the beginning of a crafting station here. 
and uh, you can use any 3D texture pack, or I'm sorry, not a 3D, but any texture pack, Minecraft texture pack that's high enough resolution. Um, you could even use low resolution ones if you'd like. Um, I'm sure they would all pretty much work. They're just going to be more pixelated, of course. Um, or if you'd like to make tiny little models, just choose the appropriate size. Um, so this is the great thing about Photoshop's new 3D modeling. Um, yeah.